Macro and close-up photography lenses are expensive and heavy. Carrying the extra gear on photography walks is tiring and takes up valuable space in the kit bag. Nissi have a solution, but is it any good? So last year I started playing around with macro and close-up photography a little bit, just as part of my normal photography landscape shoots and walks. It just added another dimension to my photography and something that I was really kind of quite interested in developing a little bit more as I started to think more about shooting the intimate landscape rather than just the widest scenes. But I found that there were a number of restrictions with the kit that I had. I addressed some of those by getting some filters, some other bits and pieces to sort of help me with my photography. But whatever I tried to do, at some point I got to the situation where I would like to get a little bit closer, but just couldn't manage that with the kit that I was using. But that's not really a problem because I could have solved it quite easily by going out and buying a macro lens. There are quite a few available on the market. But when you start to look at the price of some of these pieces of equipment for something which you're only going to use occasionally, then you start to wonder whether or not it's actually worth it. And of course, there's another issue as well. I've also been trying to significantly reduce the amount of weight in my camera gear and the amount of gear that I carry, or at least update it and upgrade it with equipment which is a little bit lighter, faster and easier to use out in the field so I can keep that flow going when I'm looking for my images. So when you consider the cost and the added weight of carrying another lens around with me, suddenly a macro lens isn't really such a great option for me. So I started doing a little bit of research and looking around on the internet to see what I could find. So when I actually started searching for close-up lenses on the internet, I came up with a number of different options. And one of the things which came up in the search results was this macro close-up lens from Nissi UK. And when I looked at this a bit closer up, it seemed to actually do everything that I needed to do. It would cover lenses from 77 to 72 to, 7 to 67, sorry. It would cover lenses which had filter threads from 77, 72 and 67 millimeters. Which is great because it meant that it would work on my existing camera gear. So I could use it with my Canon 24 to 105 and I could also put it on my 70 to 300. And looking at the website, it actually seems to suggest that the best lens to use this on would be a 70 to 300 focal length. So not giving it too much more thought than that, I ordered up the kit and lo and behold, it arrived just a few days ago. So let's actually see what's inside of this kit and what it is that it gives us. So the lens comes in a relatively nice sort of cad padded pouch um, supplied by Nissi. It fits quite nicely inside your camera bag and you can see that later on in the video. But when you open it up inside, you've got, a, you've got the lens itself um, it's nicely protected with front and rear end caps. And also there's the adapter rings for the 72 to 77, 67 to 77, which enables it to cover all of my different lenses. Now on first inspection, it's a heavyweight piece of kit. It seems quite well made, it's quite good. It's got filter threads both sides, so I can use it on both. So I can, sorry, it's got filter threads both sides, so that I can use my existing range of filters with it as well, which I can see being quite useful with macro photography so that I can use my polarizing filters, neutral density filters, if I want to use those as well. But I guess the only way to really find out if this is gonna be any good is to get out in the field and give it a go and see what happens. Now it just happens that it's actually snowdrop season right now in the UK. And the snowdrop is a really white, delicate flower and something which I've wanted to try and capture and photograph for a number of years now, but never really been able to get close enough with them with my existing camera equipment. So a couple of afternoons ago, I decided to pop out for a few hours to a location that I know reasonably well and I knew it would be able to deliver the subjects that I was looking for. So first of all, I took a few photographs without the Nissi lens attached. And the reason I did that was because I just really wanted to find out whether or not if it's gonna make that much of a significant enough difference. Does it get me in closer to the subject? Does it deal with some of the issues that I was actually having? So after I found a few subjects, I set the camera on the tripod, fitted my 70 to 300 millimeter lens, because this is the one that I think I'm gonna be using, or certainly thought I was gonna be using most of the time and get my best results with. And this, he actually recommend 
um, a focal length of about 70 to 300 millimeters, and I think a working distance of about 20 to 30 centimeters away from your subject. So you can see that really it is capable of some quite high levels of magnification. Although I couldn't find anything which made it clear what level of magnification is it is. Is it true macro or is it just close up? For my needs, that doesn't really matter though. So if we drop into the um, develop module so we can have a look at the raw file to start with. So this is the image which I took was straight with a 70 to 300 millimeter lens um, with no editing or anything on it or anything applied to it. Now one of the issues that I have with this is that I just can't get quite close enough. And that was one of the things that I was saying earlier on, although I could get reasonable close-up photographs, I couldn't get into that individual flower and separate them out. And that's the problem that we've got with this photograph. It didn't matter what I did, I just couldn't get rid of this clump of white flowers at the bottom. I decided to develop it anyway and uh, just process it and improve a few things. So I wanted to look at the same subject again, but I'm just moving the camera a couple of inches to the left and right and just see what we've got. So I'm going to open up the raw file first again. So this is the first picture that I ever took and examined with the um, Nissi close-up lens without any additional editing being done to it. Now I'm relatively pleased if you go into 100% on the screen, you can kind of see that there is detail there. Yes, the depth of field is exceptionally shallow. Um, and if we look at it, this was taken at f5.6. So I was really trying to maximize that shutter speed. And in hindsight, I probably should have found a sweeter spot for the lens, but I can do that later on. But on a first glance, it certainly achieved what I set out to do, which was just to get in closer. I proceeded to go on a bit further and actually edit this file because nothing out of the camera is exactly how you want it to begin with. So this is the final edit that I actually put in. And I haven't really done a huge amount to it. I've played with the exposure a little bit. I've played with the highlights, um, the shadows, um, the whites and the blacks just to get it right. And I've also de put a slight bit of dehaze on it and desaturated it just to give it a softer, more gentle feel, which is in keeping with this flower itself, because photography isn't just all about the technical side, it's about trying to also portray the image in the right way. One of the issues I had though, was that it actually proved really hard to get that lens to subject distance right. If I can sort of demonstrate with, with this lens, what I found was that if I was too far away or too close, I couldn't get the lens itself to focus. So I only had quite a narrow band in which to work in. Now, in some ways, that's nothing to do with the lens itself. It was more to do with my own setup and what I was trying to achieve. I'd gone to a location that was particularly hard to work in. It was quite muddy. The flowers were located on the bank. I was also photographing a contrasty subject which made exposure tricky and I was also um, dealing with some quite windy conditions at some point. So that made things a little bit harder for me to do a proper test. So there are some considerations to take in when we finally evaluate this lens. So I decided to try a bit of handheld photography and the only problem I had was I found it quite hard to, to to work with the 70 to 300 with the Nissi lens on the front of it. It's not it's particularly heavy, but when it's right on the end of the lens, it's another, you know, three, 400 grams on there, which sort of unbalances the camera a little bit. So I decided to swap lenses and eventually back, went back to my 24 to 105. And with it sat on the 24 to 105, it didn't seem that bad at all. It was reasonably well balanced um, and it worked. The only thing I had to do was take off my, my usual filter that I use before I fitted the lens onto the front. But you know, that's no real sort of problem. So with this on the front of the camera, it, it was reasonably good and I was able to focus and uh, work at a fairly reasonable sort of distance. 
problem I had though was obviously still getting that subject to distance right and working with that and the windy conditions. So I'm sure it would have been a far easier under different lighting conditions on a different day. So the, both these last two images were taken with the 24 to 105 lens. And once again, if we go into the develop module, this is the um, edited image. And we can zoom in really quite close on this. And actually, it's not too bad at all. Now this was shot at f5.6 on the 24 to 105, and it seems to have come out quite sharp. The only issue I've got is the area of sharpness really is up here. Once again, that's nothing to do with the lens. It's more to do with how I set up the image and what I focused on. And I think if this bloom hadn't been bouncing up and down and we hadn't had such a windy day, I would have got a better result from it. I went on and photographed another image and I'll show you this one as well. And after editing and a bit of playing about, you can see that actually I've managed to get in much closer with this. And if I actually go in and have a look at the, um, look at it 200%, you can see that it has managed to capture that detail in there. Um, and anything to do with the depth of field or anything really would kind of be to do with my setup and not the lens itself. These are all challenges which you're gonna face with any type of macro or close-up photography. Now I have to be honest, when I first opened up these images initially and started looking at them as a big set, I was a little bit disappointed. And I nearly didn't make this video for that very reason. I didn't really want to show you some of the work that I produced. And I didn't think it was a good, fair reflection of what this close-up lens could do. But the reason I've decided to make it is because I think it's important to stress that anybody who buys this lens isn't really going to be a dedicated full-time macro photographer. If that's their thing and that's what they really want to go out and do, they're going to buy a macro lens. This isn't for the macro photographer who does it all the time. Although it is a quality bit of kit and I'm sure with a lot more practice I could get really good results from it. The problems which I've experienced are largely to do with the ability of me as a close-up macro photographer and something I need to learn and practice and, and build up on those techniques. So I wanted a low cost, low weight, relatively high quality solution to macro or close-up photography out in the field. Now I thought those things wouldn't actually be possible and I would have to compromise on some of them. Now I'm sure I'm compromising a little bit on the quality and definitely a little bit on the usability of the lens. As I say, getting that subject distance was really quite difficult. But the other issues which I experienced the wind, the composition, the lighting conditions, struggling with some of these elements are things which I would have also struggled with with a normal macro lens anyway. So taking into consider all those limitations, and this is the first time that I've used this lens, I think actually it does tick all the boxes. Optically, I would say it's probably not 100% pin sharp. But there again, I haven't really optimized the way that I work. I haven't experimented with different apertures. I haven't done any testing to work out the optimal conditions for using this piece of equipment. The high contrast edges on some of my images where I've got a bit of blue green fringing. Well, to be honest, I'm using a very high contrast subject. So you're gonna get a little bit of that anyway with most lenses. So I paid about a hundred pound-ish for this setup and I would have easily paid five to 10 times that for a macro lens. So with a bit more practice and a few test shots, I think I can find that optical sweet spot and improve the quality of the images I'm producing. So for my verdict, this is a great option. It does what it says on the box. It does provide a low cost, low weight solution, and it is a quality piece of equipment. So if you're interested in getting out and experimenting as a landscape photographer, not as a full-time macro enthusiast, then go out, buy one of the lenses, give it a go. And if you use the affiliate link in the description, then you'll also support my channel at the same time.